Sharp presents. NHLPA's Wayne Gretzky's All-Star Hockey Tips. Throughout my hockey career, I've shared many great competitive moments with a host of talented players, players that have played with me and against me. Quite often, it's the strength of those opponents that causes you to dig even deeper, to perform your best, to find that extra energy, that inner drive that will set you apart from the rest. He's got to be feeling on top of the world now. In the heat of game action, most of what we do on the ice is pure instinct. However, this instinct comes from developed skills practiced often and precisely throughout our careers. It's the understanding of the mechanics and the proper execution of these techniques that will make you a better hockey player. In this video, you'll see players such as Alexander McGillney and Pavel Bury demonstrating the offensive attack. Sergei Fedorov executing various face-off techniques, and Rob Niedermeyer showcasing his talents. Then you'll see my teammate, Marty McSorley, illustrating the art of avoiding, giving, and taking the check. Along with all these great NHLers, I'll be demonstrating puck handling and skating techniques that I've been utilizing throughout my career. You'll also see actual game footage of players such as Steve Iserman, Doug Gilmore performing the face-off, Mark Messe and Pat LaFontaine puck handling. Keep watching for other great hockey moves by Wendell Clark, Ray Bork, Yarmur Yager, and many other exciting players. Although there are many complex strategies in the game today, combined with dozens of needed skills to carry the various game plans out, this video deals mostly with the basics, the fundamental hockey skills needed to make you the best player you can be. Along with detailed breakdowns of each play, we've provided many great game highlights to further illustrate these skills. As an added bonus, we've gotten a few all-stars together to go one-on-one -on -one in a hockey skills competition that is as exciting as the game itself. In watching this video, remember, practice does not make perfect. Proper practice will make you a better player. Have fun with the greatest game in the world. Puck comes up to Gretzky, skating across center, on the move to the blue line. Gretzky gathering speed, moving in on goal. The most important part of the game of hockey is being able to skate. And anyone can improve their skating with determination and practice. The more you practice, the more natural your skating will be in game situations. So, now you can... The first thing you need to develop is a good fluid stride. Remember, most of your power comes from your thigh muscles. On your takeoff and stride, make sure your knees are bent and that your weight is slightly forward. Fully extend your pushing leg from your hip, knee, and ankle using your thighs for power. Think of your skate as a part of your leg when pushing off. Don't glide, get both your legs moving. And when you're skating, always keep your head up and your stick out in front of you. The NHL is filled with excellent skaters. Watch how these players use their skating to elevate their game. Here comes the pass up ahead and misses Hall. Hall with some room. He's on a breakaway. Shoot, score! Brent Hall. First period, there's no score. Boston and Toronto. Here comes Dave Andrichuk. Takes the shot. He scores! Three minutes remaining in the overtime. Puck comes loose for Sergei Fedorov. He may look to end it with an individual effort. Looking to get through the center. The pass. He's in for a shot. He scores. He stands up right side. Soon as he touches the puck, the crowd lights up. Bure comes in. Serves. Goal.
practice your skating in both short bursts and long strides. This will help you improve your starting and stopping. Remember, your hockey skills start with skating. So keep your knees bent, extend your leg, feel the power in your thighs, keep your head up, and your stick in front of you. Puck comes up to Gretzky. He's in heavy traffic, but look at him move. Gretzky dipping and diving up to the blue line. Gretzky still with it, trying to find some room. Skating fast in a straight line doesn't make you a good skater. Controlled, powerful turns are the trademark of a good skater. Changing direction creates time and space for the puck carrier and is an integral part of defensive play. It's important to go into your turns hard. Start by gliding and bending at the knee. Transfer your weight to the outside of your inner skate. Keep your inside skate ahead of your outside skate. Turn the stick in front of you and follow it. Lean your body into the turn. Practice turning both ways. The ultimate turn is the famed spinorama. Notice how these players use their move to lose their opponents. Keep in mind, this looks a lot easier than it is. Niedermeyer picks him up again. Kameskakov throws a pick and Burray is gone. Turning is another aspect of hockey that when practiced enough will come to you naturally in a game situation. So when you're working on your turning skills, keep these points in mind. Transfer your weight to the outside of your inner skate, keep your stick in front of you, and lean your body forward into the turn. Kings trying to generate some offense. Gretzky out there, wins the faceoff, puck over towards the board. Gretzky will move into position up along the wall. How important is the faceoff? I've seen games, series and championships, won and lost in the face-off circle. Face-offs are the key to gaining possession of the puck, and when that puck drops, you have to be physically and mentally prepared. I don't have to say anything, don't you? Now I'm here, this is where the puck's going. When you're getting ready to take a face-off, keep both hands on the stick and your stick on the ice. Keep your eyes on the puck in the referee's hand. Concentrate on the puck and never take your eyes off it. When the ref drops the puck, turn your stick into the puck and quickly draw it back. Speed is very important in winning a faceoff. Oh, what a drop. Get back there. Another faceoff technique is the body turn. Again, keep your eyes on the puck in the referee's hand. Concentrate on the puck. Never take your eyes off it. When the puck drops, turn your body around in front of your opponent so you're facing your teammates. Then play the puck back. This way, you block your opponent from going after the puck. Not until you have perfected basic face-off skills can you expect to have the fortune of scoring on the face-off. All of the premier face-off players have the ability to concentrate on the puck and think on the draw, as well as terrific hand-eye coordination. Watch how they find the correct move to give their team possession of the puck. Box there, he's serving a 10-minute misconduct that he picked. Penalty killing I with the one -timer score! No matter who you are facing off against, it's important to be mentally prepared. And remember, stay with it. What you do after the puck is dropped is crucial. Be prepared to make your next move. Okay, so you know how to win a faceoff. But do you know how to handle the puck once you've gained possession? Good puck handling is the key to setting up for a pass or creating scoring opportunities. The first thing to remember is the position of your hands on the stick. You want to have your hands in a comfortable position. Keep your bottom hand about halfway down the shaft. Keep the puck cupped in the middle of the blade. If you have it on the tip, you risk losing control. In order to stop the puck from bouncing, keep it within one foot of your body. During a breakaway, since the puck will generally be a few feet out in front of your body, 
pull the puck back to get control before you shoot. Any further and the puck will pick up speed and bounce off the blade of your stick. Always keep your head up when handling the puck. This way you'll be able to see your teammates and avoid a possible check. Adam Oates and Pat LaFontaine are two of the best puck handlers in the league. Notice how they and others keep the puck about a foot from their body to deke their opponents. Up by Adam Oates. Oates down the left wing to center. He and Neely cross the line. Oates gets around. Slaney fires a shot. Scores! Yager, one man back. Tachi's headed for the net. Yager into the slot. Holding on to the puck. He shoots. He scores! Time. Penalty is almost over. Gilmore to Andrew Chuck. Big shot. Stopped by Bridger. The rebound off the crossbar. And the puck is in the net. The Maple Leafs have scored. To Messier. Moving on two on two. He has Graves with him. Mark Messier greases by Shodin and shoots. He scores. A shorthanded goal for the Rangers. Puck handling is all about control. When you're working on these drills, remember, Bottom hand halfway down the stick, puck cupped in the middle of your blade, head up and eyes straight ahead. Proper practice and repetition will make you a good puck handler. Speed and agility. I've got two of the finest guys in the league at handling the puck. Going through, we've got a test for you. We'll see who the best is of you two. I'm a little worried here. I might have my money over here. What we're going to do is we're going to start here, we're going to stick handle through all the pylons, around the net, back through the pylons, and the clock stops when the puck hits the twine. Oh, still alive! Come on, baby! That's bad. Record time! Hey. <laughs> Here's Curry with the puck. Curry, long pass. What a pass to Gretzky. Here comes Gretzky in on goal. Score! Gretzky upstairs. Great pass from Curry. To me, there's nothing more spectacular than a goal that starts with the perfect pass. Well-timed and accurate passes are essential to break out of your own end and press the attack. Good players look for the right pass at all times. Take off and stride. We're ready. Keep the puck in the middle of your blade. Use a sweeping motion. If you are a right shot, keep the puck near your right foot. If you are a left shot, keep the puck near your left foot. Look at the target and anticipate where your teammate will want to receive the pass. Sweep the puck. Don't slap it. Always follow through towards your target. For a flip pass, turn your stick at a slight angle towards the ice. Make sure the puck is in the middle of your blade. Keep a firm grip on your stick, using your wrist, flip the puck up in the direction you want it to go with a short follow through. Don't hit the puck too hard, otherwise it will bounce off your teammate's stick when he tries to receive it. When receiving a pass, watch your teammates and position yourself in an open area. Keep your stick on the ice and receive the puck in the middle of your blade. Knowing where your teammates are on the ice and anticipating their moves are crucial elements when making a pass. Watch how these players execute everything from the basic pass to the most difficult, the blind pass. Gildy fires the Jets through center. LaFontaine across the line. Here's LaFontaine to Simpson. He scores! Go out of the right of Potvin. Iserman. To the point, Konstantinov, and blocking the shot was a sliding Mark Osborne. Center in front of the net, they score! Each to Messier, quickly over to Zubov, back to Leach, in front of the net, Graham shoots, he scores! Here comes LaFontaine, he's got McGilney, right in front, scores! McGilney! 
Learning how to pass effectively is important in becoming a good hockey player. It's also a sign of good sportsmanship and trust in your teammates' ability. The slap shot is one of the most powerful shots in hockey. It can overpower a goaltender or provide a good rebound or tip-in opportunity. But be careful, slap shots can also be one of the least accurate shots you can take. First thing to remember, you want to be nice and loose. Position yourself in an area where you have a clear path to the net. Keep the puck low by positioning it in the middle of your feet. If you position the puck on your front foot, you're going to be raising the puck and the shot won't be as effective. Slide your bottom hand down the stick. Lean into it. Transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot. Use as much stick speed as possible and follow through. When you can, use the players in front of the net as a screen. Keep your eyes on the target and not on the puck. Al McGinnis and Al Iafredi have two of the hardest slap shots in the league. Watch how they and others execute the shot with speed but maintain their control. Looks for Shanahan, can't quite get it to him. Farmer taps it back, McKenna's shooting scores! His second goal of the night! Okay, remember with 11 goals. Hunter, Iafredi, and he scores! Subob and Leach are the point men. Leach gets the puck, takes a quick shot, he scores! Comes out in front. Checked by Bukabul. Coffee takes over, takes the shot, he scores! Paul Coffee with another blast. In a game situation, you won't have a lot of time to think about your slap shot, so it's important to go over the key points during practice. Don't forget, position the puck in the middle of your stance, transfer your weight, and watch for screens. Blake takes a shot, Kretzky's got it. Although the slap shot is powerful, the wrist shot is more accurate and often will catch a goaltender unprepared. The wrist shot is an important offensive weapon because it can be released quickly and accurately. <laughs> Place the puck in the heel of your stick towards the back of your stance. This will give you a better thrust towards the net. Keep your eyes on the target and transfer your weight onto your stick. Slide your bottom hand down the stick so that your grip is wider than normal. Never miss. Tighten your grip and snap your bottom wrist. At the same time, snap the top hand back towards the body. Follow through towards the target. Your follow through should be high for a high shot, low for a low shot. The top of your stick should have moved very little while the blade has moved in a short arc. When released quickly, a wrist shot provides the element of surprise needed to beat the goalie. Notice how these pros take almost no time at all when firing a wrist shot. Recky taken to the boards by David Volek. It's dug loose. This is Lindros. He scores! Here's Burry again. Terrari down scores! Right in front, Matteau couldn't put it in. There's a shot, they score! Dallas net is empty with a sixth attacker on. Here's Gagne winding, passing in front, a shot, and a goal! Three on two, the big line. Andrew shot, Clark in the slot, Clark shoots goal! When practicing your wrist shot, set up five pucks near the blue line and let them go in rapid fire succession. The speed of your wrist shot will improve naturally as you get stronger. Quick release is how you score goals in the NHL. And no two guys have done it better than these two guys. You got Luke, 60 goal man, Yari, 70 goal man. We're gonna do a drill, 10 pucks, shoot at the net. The clock stops when the 10th puck goes in the net. Back to the circle, Grover tied! Yari Curry with Mike Dowling in the game. The big up front, the Roman Curry shoots his goal! Yari Curry, up the center ice. Curry, he came with the man of man, fights on Roman Curry. Curry in front, he shoots his goal! Ready, set, go! Oh, man. Oh. All right. I mean, 
Ensemble? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, set, go. Oh, any questions? Two days later. <laughs> He's questioning the speed limit. I don't know. The regular one. Hey, they're all in. Take a guess. Three. Three, six. In game situations, you'll often find that you don't have much time to set up for the shot. In the heat of the battle, it's important to know how to one-time a shot. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's go real close on that. Look for an open spot in the offensive zone. Make sure you are in a controlled position with your legs at least shoulder width apart and your knees slightly bent. Grip your stick firmly and keep it low on the ice. When you see the pass coming, draw your stick back. In one quick motion with your head up, let the shot go towards the net. Timing is very important. Always keep your eyes on the puck so you know when the pass is coming. You want to get a lot of power behind you when releasing a shot. Watch how these players anticipate the pass and keep their bodies in a balanced position. Now for Oates, now for Wesley, back for Bork, the one time is However, ranked fifth overall in the league. Ferrari, nope. Emerson dropped it. Oh! Ramchuk spun out. Gilmore in front. Here's Paul Coffey in the left corner. On the other side, Nicholas Lutz, Nicholas in. Practice your one-timers when you are standing still and when you are moving. In both situations, remember, find the open spot on the ice, maintain a good balanced position, and always keep your eyes on the puck. Robitaille's got Gretzky coming behind him. Drop pass for Gretzky. Gretzky back for Robitaille. We've looked at slap shots, wrist shots, and one-timers. But one of the most effective ways to beat the goalie is to try to deflect or tip in the puck. Good deflections are the result of skill and timing, not luck. When practicing deflections, it's important to properly right position yourself in front of the net. Stand about two feet away from the goalie, just outside the crease. Keep your eyes on the puck and your stick low. Position the blade of your stick at an angle towards the net. When your teammate lets the shot go, Move your stick into the line of fire. Keep your blade at an angle towards the net. Don't swing or bat at the puck. Direct the shot towards the open part of the net. Most of the time when you set up for a deflection, you're also screening the goaltender. Watch how these players stand with their back to the goalie. Not only can they see the puck, but they're also blocking the goaltender's view. Holding. Back for Galley. Shot. Score! Body positioning is very important when making a deflection or setting up a screen. Remember, keep your eyes on the puck, your stick low, and keep your balance. Gretzky's going to move over after. He's going to have company. Gordon Mark over there to watch him. He gives Gretzky a bump along the board. Hockey is a fast and physical game. Big hits cause turnovers and ignite teams. During my years in the league, I've learned the importance of knowing how to avoid and receive a body check. Carefully control the gap between yourself and the attacker. Usually he will be approaching you at a high speed. Your first option is to accelerate quickly away from the board by bending your knees and extending your pushing legs. If there's no time to skate away, turn your body around away from the attacker. When it's impossible to avoid a check, you must know how to receive it properly. Make sure you are not directly facing the boards. Bend your knees slightly and keep your elbows in. Most of the pressure from the check will be absorbed in your shoulders, hips, and legs. Over an 84-game season, body checks are hard to avoid. 
But watch how these pros use their bodies to absorb the check as well as give the check. Cam Neely, boy, he's had four big hits already in this game. And Dion, he tips the pass to Kurt Mull. Hit hard by Sylvain Cote. If you're taking a hit, remember to use your shoulders, hips, and legs. Keep your elbows in and your head up. When you're the one doing the hitting, never lead with your head and never attempt to check when you are off balance. Always keep your stick down and most importantly, never body check an opponent from behind. And here come the Kings two on one. Gretzky over to Curry, moving it on goal. The two on one break is one of the most exciting plays in the game of hockey. When I'm going in two-on-one, -on my objective is to distract the defenseman and set up a good clear shot on net by myself or for my teammate. On the ice, you always need to be aware of where your teammates are, especially as a puck carrier. When driving in for a two-on-one attack, keep your head up and skate quickly down the ice. Watch the defenseman and let him make the first move. When the defenseman tries to use his stick to steal a puck away, make either a backhand pass or a flip pass to your teammate. If the defenseman stays in the center of the two-on-one, fire a high shot at the goalie. Last minute cross ice passes in front of the goalie can be another effective move. When driving to the net, fake a shot and let the defender try to block it, or vary your speed to throw the defender off. Reaching forward with your stick, flutter a pass over to your teammate who will one time the shot into the net. To be effective on the two-on-one break, keep your head up and be aware of what's happening around you. Be ready to drive to the net or pass the puck off. And here are the Canucks two-on-one. Pat Valentino, Bude, Duel, Dickey, scores! Here come the Cats, Chris Deach, over to Peak, back to Chris Deach, scores! Great shot. Coffey with Cicerelli. Cicerelli scores! Dougie Brown, good play up the center. Schrager without a helmet. Jogger throws a play two on one. Jogger going right in the slot. Comes in with a backhander. Hansik, he can't stop it. The Penguin scores. Jogger drills it home with the Penguins lead one to nothing. Help, book them, Dano. Straka and Jogger team up again. Two on one attacks can occur at any moment. Be prepared to get the breakout started and always be aware of where your teammates are on the ice. On the break, remember, don't telegraph your passes. That's one sure way to lose your advantage. Hockey players do different types of training over the summer to stay in shape for the season. A popular method is inline skating. It's similar to hockey, but some of the basics are actually quite different. The skating stride for inline is similar to that of ice hockey. Keep your knees bent, fully extend your pushing leg, and develop a good fluid stride. Depending on your skill level, there are different stopping techniques. Most beginners will want to use the stopper. The stopper should be located on the heel of the skate of your strong leg, and your knees and lean back on your stopper. Shift your weight to your strong leg and lean back with your thigh and hip muscles. Put your arms out in front of you for support. If you're becoming more advanced, you can stop as you would on hockey skates. Turn both skates together and make a quick side turn. Turning on inline skates is slightly different than turning on ice skates. With a crossover turn, bring your outside leg over your inside leg. Lean slightly into the direction of the turn. Another way to turn quickly is the power turn. When skating at full stride, lean in with your strong leg and transfer your weight onto it. You'll be using some muscle groups you don't use in ice skating. So do your stretching and then go out and have some fun. Inline skating is a good way to stay in shape and build up endurance for the hockey season. So give it a try and make inline skating part of your training routine. Adam Kraft.
straight in the near circle. Deep slot to Sam on her side of the net. Center and pass. They score! Hello. Coming back to the right point to Oaks. Now to the slot to Bork. Back on the two to the side. He scores. Off on Tane to Howard Chuck. He only let it go in. Drew Chuck tries it from the left side. And off on Tane shoots and scores. The next few tips are all about teamwork. We're going to use game footage to demonstrate. Power plays can be effective, but you have to know how to set them up to make them work to your advantage. On this example, Washington sets up against Pittsburgh. Now let's break this play down. Obviously the face off in a power play situation is crucial. You're going to see Peek do a nice job at winning the face off back to his defenseman Cote. Alright, let's roll the tape. Alright, stop it right there. Juno does a nice job of leaving his face off spot and coming out here towards the puck to give Cote an outlet pass. Slaney goes wide to create some open space. Peek is doing what he's supposed to do, defend against Francis, the centerman, and then head to the slot. Pavanka is already in front of the net, and we'll see what happens right here. All right, stop it right there. As you can see, as Juno did, now Pavanka is doing the same thing. He's coming into the corner to give Juno an outlet pass. Now Juno can either pass it to Pavanka or go to Cote as an outlet pass. And as you can see right here, Slaney is in no man's land, but he's going to become the dangerous man because Peek is in front of the net in slot area, letting the Pittsburgh guys worry about this man right here. And as you're going to see, this is the dangerous guy to worry about. All right, roll the tape. All right, stop right there. Now Juno, again, when he passes the puck, he heads towards the net. He doesn't stand still. Moves the puck down to Pavanka. Peek is still in front of the net. Pavanka makes a great pass across, and Slaney, who started out over here, has now come full circle down and is wide open. Pavanka makes a great pass, and that's a textbook power play. All right, let's roll it. Easy goal. Remember to take your time. You have a full two minutes to set up. Power plays put the whole team on the advantage. So pass the puck around and make use of the extra attacker. Bouncing puck, Belfort was careful with it, put it to the right wing board, Kriva Krasov, failed to get it out, Ricky's on shot, the puck, he's on the floor, the hat-trick for Chris Kantoff! And the Canadians, Daniel, failed to get it by Bork, kept in, Juno, scores! And cleared up the boards, Chason kept it in, on the other side for Kantoff, back to Chason. Curry with Mike Donnelly to gain the blue line. Curry with poke check. Petit trying to get the puck out. Curry to Bresky and he scores. A lot of things that happen in the offensive zone start at the blue line. Most teams, a lot of shots on goal, have a defenseman that serves as the quarterback and sets up the plays. This play shows Los Angeles breaking out of their zone against Anaheim by Tim Sweeney. Sweeney tried to walk in, taken away by Sador. He gives it to Yari Curry. Curry's got Robitaille behind the play. Robitaille to play, follow along. The buddy shoots, he scores! Now let's take a closer look. <laughs> Offense starts from good defense. And as you can see right here, Los Angeles has one defenseman, two defensemen, a centerman in the slot area, and another forward helping as support. Four guys back in their own zone helping to give support. Roll the tape. Stop it right there. Sador, the defenseman for Los Angeles, breaks up the play. Yuri Curry, who might be one of the best defensive players ever to play the game, is back to give him support. He ends up with the puck. And watch what Yuri does immediately. He has his head up and heading in the right direction, looking for a man in front of him. Blake, who was a defender here, instead of staying still, has now circled and is coming out, and we'll see him a little bit later as he's on his horse ready to get into the play. Roll it.
stop it right here. All of a sudden now, Yeri's all by himself, but the blue line attack starts from right here because he knows as soon as he gets to the blue line, he's head manning the puck all the way to the far blue line to a forward who's on the boards while Rob Blake, who was defending his net, is already on his way to try to get into the play. Stop it right there. Now the puck has moved all the way two zones to a forward who's onside. This forward now is taking the puck down the wall, is looking for Blake, who is the last guy in the zone. Now is the first guy in the offensive zone behind the man with the puck on the boards. All right, go ahead. Stop it right there. Curry, he didn't stand still either. He got back up into the play the best he could. But Blake, who was the last defender, got right in the play. He gets two passes, one from Curry, Curry from to the forward, forward over to Blake. Blake now is all alone in the slot, and the whole thing started from good defensive coverage, a good blue line attack because Blake got into the play. Go ahead. Bingo. So the next time you see a team celebrating a goal, take a look and see who's by the blue line. Chances are the whole play started right there. That's enough. One thing great hockey players always have is they're great skaters. I don't know who the fastest is between you two, but we're going to settle it right in here. Better off, end to end. Gore, look at him just wind it up. The blue line, wondering what went by him. One more, over the line. Crashes through, the dip. Score! He's in for a shot, Kim Gore! Kim Gore, the best, and Gore is first, loose, and score! you're over there. Sir Gator here, we're going to do one lap around. First guy to cross center, the fastest in the world. Okay. Fastest in the world? One, nope. two, three, whistle. I'll go one, two, three, no whistle, no cheat, and we have to do it again. Ready? One, two, three. Continues for the Stars. Medano scores. Two nothing. You're coming over. Graves moves in and shoots. Save. Draper. Rebound. Messier comes around in front. He scores. And the Rangers win. Lafave to Gilmore. Ellett breaks for the net. Here's Doug Gilmore from behind the goal. Big crowd in front. Clark from two feet. He scores. Back to 99. Shindig coming in from the point. Takes the shot, they score! Playing behind the net is one of my favorite spots. There's a lot of advantages to playing there, including being able to set up for a breakaway or a goal. Let's take a look at this play where Vancouver scores on the visiting Chicago team. Notice how the play develops behind the net. Cordell. After the puck in back of the net for Vancouver. Craven there to help out. Gore, look at him just wind it up. Cuts into the slot and scores. Now let's break this play down. One of the first things that good offensive players recognize is defensive zone coverage. As you see right here, Courtnell, Craven, and Bure. It's pretty obvious that Chicago with a defenseman here, a centerman on Craven, and a defenseman down here on Courtnell are playing a one-on-one -on -one coverage. All right, well, let's roll the tape here. Stop it right there. Now what you see is Craven is still in front of the net with the centerman who is doing a nice job of checking him. But what's happened is the puck's gone around behind the net and Vancouver is doing something that they want to do. They're trying to get the Chicago defensemen to run around a little bit. And as you can see now, two guys are covering Courtnell by himself. Not only 
Is that not good positioning for Chicago? But they have no defenseman in front of the net for Belfort, which could leave an opening for Merzen here on a loose puck or for Craven to sneak in for a loose puck. But we'll see what happens. All right, stop it right there. Now what you see is Cortinal's done a nice job of taking this defenseman and working hard to get the puck free. Craven has snuck away a little bit from his centerman, and they've both gone behind the net chasing a little bit. Craven's got a little bit of stride on him. He's a big man. He's using his body and his size to his advantage. But Pavel Bure has now snuck over here to a little bit of an opening. And believe me, in the offensive zone, you don't want to give Pavel Bure any kind of an opening. So we'll see what happens. Stop it right there. Now this one-on-one -on -one coverage that Chicago had done so well earlier has now all of a sudden because of all the hard work behind the net and in the corners broken down a little bit and that they have five defenders all trying to check this one guy right here, Pavel Bure. But Pavel being a smart player knows that this forward and this forward responsibility is the defense and basically he has an opening right here because Craven and Courtnell are keeping these defense down low. All right, roll it. And Pavel makes no mistake as he winds all the way around, takes a nice backhand shot, and two men in front of the net creating screens in front of Belfour. Another main advantage to playing behind the net is the goalie can't see you. So remember, watch for open space, think of the net as a decoy, and plan your move. Even if you are not making hockey your career, but just enjoy playing the game with your friends, I'm sure you found many of the demonstrated skills and tips shown in this video useful. Although the majority of these drills were presented in a fundamental fashion, it's the understanding of the basics that will make you a better hockey player. As I mentioned at the start of this presentation, proper practice makes you a better player. This quite simply means that practicing these drills and other athletic skills the right way will avoid developing bad habits that will adversely affect your game. In order to fully enjoy this great sport of hockey, practice these tips regularly and work towards playing the game on instinct. But above all, the most important thing is still to have fun. Think of your skate as a part of your leg when pushing off. Don't glide, get both your legs moving. And when you're skating, always keep your head up and your stick out in front of you. Start by gliding and bending at the knee. Transfer your weight to the outside of your inner skate. Keep your inside skate ahead of your outside skate. Keep your eyes on the puck in the referee's hand. Concentrate on the puck, never take your eyes off it. When the ref drops the puck, Turn your stick into the puck and quickly draw it back. You want to have your hands in a comfortable position. Keep your bottom hand about halfway down the shaft. Keep the puck cupped in the middle of the blade. If you have it on the tip, you risk losing control. Use a sweeping motion. If you are a right shot, keep the puck near your right foot. If you are a left shot, keep the puck near your left foot. Look at the target and anticipate where your teammate will want to receive the pass. Always follow through towards your target. Keep the puck low by positioning it in the middle of your feet. Lean into it. Transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot. Use as much stick speed as possible and follow through. Keep your eyes on the target and transfer your weight onto your stick. Slide your bottom hand down the stick so that your grip is wider than normal. Tighten your grip and snap your bottom wrist. When you see the pass coming, draw your stick back. In one quick motion with your head up, let the shot go towards the net. Timing is very important. Always keep your eyes on the puck so you know when the pass is coming. When your teammate lets the shot go, move your stick into the line of fire. Keep your blade at an angle towards the net. Don't swing or bat at the puck. Direct the shot towards the open part of the net. 
When it's impossible to avoid a check, you must know how to receive it properly. Make sure you are not directly facing the boards. Bend your knees slightly and keep your elbows in. To be effective on the two-on-one break, keep your head up and be aware of what's happening around you. Be ready to drive to the net or pass the puck off. Keep your knees bent, fully extend your pushing leg, and develop a good fluid stride. With a crossover turn, bring your outside leg over your inside leg. Lean slightly into the direction of the turn. Skating fast in a straight line doesn't make you a good skater. Controlled, powerful turns are the trademark of a good skater. Changing direction creates time, space for the... How important is the face-off? I've seen games, series, and I knew we were going nowhere with this. Moving from face-offs to putting your equipment on? Somebody please talk to me. <laughs> I was all set to talk about watching the hat referee's hand and you know, like what what was what did I just talk about? <laughs> How come he's got a $150 ticket, I got $600 bucks ticket? And everybody give him. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got confused myself. <laughs> Did you see that? All right. Sir, how are you feeling today? I feel good. <laughs> But everybody asking this one how I'm feeling. I'm worried about it. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. I need can somebody take a picture of me like really hockey player. Good look. <laughs> that's funny, that's very funny. All of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, Thank of him. It doesn't go easy, but it doesn't. No, hold on a second. Excellent. Great. You want that face on camera? Yeah. When you're looking down at the puck now? Never. <laughs> it says right in that thing that you get rid of. This is about the time you put on your equipment. So, you remember what you said before with this day? What? You finished? <laughs> I hope, I hope I never miss. That's the one thing you miss. We were having too much fun here. All right. <laughs>